super excited about this video as well as this series with the PixHawk and the QAV500. In this first video, I'm going to cover installing your PixHawk, wiring everything up, mounting your components. Then we'll follow up in an upcoming video with loading your firmware, calibrating everything, and ultimately getting to where we can do a maiden flight. Special thanks to GetUpPV.com for sponsoring this video. So let's go ahead and get started with the install. Before we begin with the PixHawk installation, I'd like to share a little bit about the build. Several of you have asked. These are the T-Motor MN3508s, 380 kV motors. We're using the Lumineer 30 amp ESCs with Simon K firmware. And these are the QAV500 540 millimeter aluminum arms. And by default, they'll swing 12 inch props. We've actually done a little mod so that we can support 13 inch props. And I wanna show you that real quick. So we're looking at the rear of the QAV500. Now this is normally where the post will mount so that when you put your top plate on, it'll go into this hole and down into this one. So we had to move these posts forward just so we have a little bit more clearance. You can see here, there's only a few millimeters Moving that post forward gives us anywhere from 10 to 15 millimeters of clearance. If you're looking at the front post, those are just fine. You have just the right amount of clearance that you need to swing that 13 inch prop. So just a really simple mod if you want to get these 13 inch props on your frame. So let's move on with the installation. We have the PixHawk and various components in the box. We have our two 3DR radios. One will mount on the QAV500. The other will be with the ground station. Either Mission Planner or Droid Planner, I'll definitely do a follow-up that shows using it with both. Our FreeSky X8R receiver. We're gonna be using SBUS with the PixHawk, as well as this antenna mast from Carbo on Thingiverse. I introduced this in another video, but I'll post a link below in case you wanna print it. So let's get PixHawk out. Have our GPS and compass our 3DR voltage monitor cable, a buzzer, our toggle button, and of course our foam pads for mounting. This comes with the parts list as well as a link to documentation for the PixHawk. So there's no instructions included, which is perfectly fine. If you go to 3DRobotics.com learn, tons of great information there. And a cool little thing about PixHawk is you get these little templates that you can stick on since we're using APM Copter firmware for this build. I'm going to put this on and the reason I do that is just mainly you'll notice that your inputs and outputs are on the side but sometimes you want to be able to see that from the top down. So what we'll do next is we'll take these four foam pads that came with PixHawk, we'll mount them in each corner and then we'll stick this down on the QAV500 frame. Now let me point one thing out about these pads. They're 3M adhesive double-sided and you'll notice that this foam is super spongy. These things work great. Now I know you pay a little bit extra for PixHawk over the APM and others, but it really includes all the components you need to ultimately take the thought out of doing the install. These are the center posts of the QAV500, so I'm going to mount the PixHawk dead center here. You'll see the arrow going forward. This is the front of our quad. And just take care to make sure that you have this mounted pointed forward. And I speak from experience, I've mounted it backwards before and it is a severe pain to get that turned around. So you can see we're mounted. Those pads have a lot of stickiness and hold to them. Next thing I normally do with PixHawk is get everything plugged in. There are about six connections here that will plug into the top of this flight controller. And I like to do that just so I can get orientation and understand the cable distance of all of these to know where I'm going to put the different components. Start with our buzzer, just two pins. Goes in the appropriately labeled buzzer port and our push button switch that will go into the switch port. Now we're going to connect our GPS and compass. So GPS will go in the GPS port. Compass will go into this I2C port. And let me just mention that PixHawk does come with this I2C splitter. So if you were going to use another device, you could plug your compass, LED, even an airspeed sensor into here and then have this plug into the I2C port on your PixHawk. But for the sake of this build, we're going to plug the compass directly into 
the I2C port on the PixHawk. Now we'll plug the GPS in. Finally our telemetry radio. Now there are actually two ports so you could run two telemetry connections. I'm going to be running one off of this telemetry one port. Finally we'll connect our 3DR power module cable to the power port. Looks a little bit like spaghetti here but that's it for our connections on top. Now we'll go ahead and connect our four ESCs as well as the receiver over SBUS. We have our ESCs connected. Now you can see from this label on top we have Prop 1, Prop 2, Prop 3, and Prop 4. I do want to make a note that I've removed the power lead, so we just have signal and ground, ground on top, signal on the bottom. Those were removed because the 3DR power module will supply the input power to the PixHawk, and you won't need to power this via BEC from your speed controllers. And these four connections, the Prop 1 through Prop 4, correspond to 1, two, three, and four, and so one and two will spin counterclockwise, and three and four will spin clockwise. So the last connections we'll need to make are with our receiver. This is the X8R, and I'm using the supplied servo cable that came with the PixHawk. So we'll go ahead and connect our SBUS port here at the bottom. Now what I found tricky with my first PixHawk install, there's actually an SBUS port on the second pin, but we want to connect SBUS from our X8R to the first port, which is labeled RCN. Now we have our X8R from SBUS out to RCN. Let me show you guys what I have before I put this top plate back on. Now the one challenge that I found with PixHawk, there are a lot of cables coming out and really just mounting your components sometimes becomes a challenge. With this QAV 500 frame, thankfully we have a lot of mounting space. And what I've tried to do is preserve enough space up front for FPV gear when we get to that point. So with that being said, I've run the toggle switch down here. I've zip tied it down just so it's accessible in the back. It does have a mount, so you could plug it into, let's say, a piece of foam on a fixed wing or a mounting hole if you had one. For the 3DR telemetry radio, I just have some 3M double-sided sticky tape holding that down. And up front, I've stickied down this buzzer. It really doesn't need to be in a place where it's very accessible, so I just kind of put it right there. And then lastly, I plugged in the power module. So what I'll do is I'll zip tie this cable to the rail, and then our battery is ultimately going to sit up top so we can run this through the top and plug the battery in there. So I'll put the top plate on. We'll run the GPS up top as well as our X8R receiver. You can see that I have the top plate mounted, the GPS compass, I have tape to the top right there. Now one thing I may decide to do in the future is put this on a mast. I've designed and 3D printed a antenna mast for this GPS. We have good separation from the ESCs down here. We'll definitely be doing a compass moat test in the future just to see if there's any interference. Finally, in the rear up top, we have the X8R receiver with our antenna mast. I've gone ahead and zip tied this XT60, which is soldered to the bottom PCB plate, and that's connected to our power module. And I have the power module coming through the top on the other end, the XT60. We'll mount this tattoo 6200 milliamp battery on top and have easy access. Now I might change that configuration later when we add this 8000 milliamp Lumineer battery. I'm not sure there's enough space there, but we'll see. We just definitely want to make sure that our CG is dead centered. So let's just do a quick power test, make sure nothing smokes or explodes. This is a 6S LiPo. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. See the toggle switch blinking, begging to be pressed. That's something you have to do before you're able to arm PixHawk and begin your flight. So those are the basics of installing PixHawk, wiring everything up, and once again, generally I've found that the biggest challenge is just figuring out where you mount everything and making sure that you have plenty of space for your battery. And in the next video in this series, I'm going to load the firmware we're going to configure our Tyrannus with this X8R. 
we'll get telemetry working, calibrate our compass. That will get us to a point where we can just do a indoor garage maiden. Then I'll talk through tuning the QAV 500 so we can get stable in the air, some autonomous missions, and doing some fun flight mode work with Droid Planner. So thank you guys for following along with this build. A special thanks to GetFPV for sponsoring this video and providing all the components to make this happen. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.